Welcome back. You're looking at a live picture by WCVB. Actually, I'm having trouble making out because uh, there we go. There's the uh, much better color in that shot. Uh, if, if you can make out in sort of the lower right-hand corner of your screen, that is where the station, the nightclub that burned overnight once stood. The town manager confirming 54 people dead, 164 in area hospitals being treated for a variety of problems from smoke inhalation to first degree, second degree, third degree burns. The most seriously injured have been transport to, transported to Boston area hospitals. In a moment, you're going to hear from the lead singer of the band, Great White, and he will tell us what he saw last night at the tail end of his performance before the pyrotechnic display turned into an inferno. A little bit earlier this morning, I spoke with Jack Russell, who is the lead singer of the band Great White, and he told us what happened last night when he was on stage during the pyrotechnics display. Let's listen. Well, my reaction is that's very negligent. You know what I mean? Obviously, um, if somebody tells us that we're okay to do pyro, we, we're going to assume that they've checked out and done all, done all their homework, you know, because we're not, we don't do this every night. You know, we only do it, we have express permission from the owners to do it because it's not our club. And I wouldn't come to your house and, you know, light your fireplace without asking permission. You know, um, I'm shocked that it happened. I'm, I, I, I'm, I, there's no words to describe how I feel right now. You know I mean, it's just it's a tragic loss of life, and, and it, I think it could have been avoided. For whatever reason, um, it happened, and, and, and I don't know. I feel so bad for the people, you know, but... I don't know what you know. What else we could have done? We I tried to put it out myself with some water bottles. That's all we had. There was no fire extinguishers on stage, you know. Um, and next thing we know, we were being yanked out there. Then the security lights went off, and then that, they, nobody could see anything. So I don't know. I don't know. Jack, and what happened from that point on? Because I know you described to the the Providence, Rhode Island Journal that the, the place went up like a Christmas tree. Uh, from the point the lights went out, how did you get out? Well, I was out. I got I got dragged out by the security, and my tour manager drug me out of the building along with the rest of the band to the back door, and the lights went out, and I went back in trying to get back in. I'm yelling if somebody's in there, and I heard some voices. I went to try to go back in, and somebody else grabbed me and said, "You can't go in there. You can't go in there." I said, well, "There's people in there. I got to get in there and try to help them out." They said, well, "You're going to get hurt." I said, "I don't care. I want to you know, get these people out of there," and they wouldn't let me back in. And the next thing you know, the whole place was going up in smoke. You know? Yeah. I, I, I don't understand it. Oh, yeah, I know. The fire chief whatever, saying whatever, whatever the material. It's the yeah. wrong material that they had on the walls. You know, knowing that, you know, it, it should have been different. Or they should have said, no, you can't use pyro. Now, they didn't have permits. They should have made us aware of that. Yeah, you even... Know, I don't know. I'm, and I, even, I hate to catch blame on anybody, you know, or, or, or try to push it off myself. It's, it, but it's just, you know, things should have been done, I think, a little more, you know, diligently. Describe to us the scene, even though they wouldn't let you get back in there, uh, after the point at which you're outside of the building, what you witnessed. We had a woman named Lisa Shea on who was badly shaken up. Fortunately, she didn't sustain any major injuries, but she described people lying on their stomachs taking snow from a snowbank and, and rubbing it on their bodies to try to soothe some of their, their burn wounds. What yeah, did you see? Yeah, it was see? terrible. I mean, I'm, well, first thing I did was our front of house guy, our sound man, he, uh, he came out and was just bloody from head to toe, skin burned off. We put him on the bus, um, picked him up and carried him to an ambulance. I mentioned they rushed him off because he was really badly injured. We got him over to Kent Hospital. Um, then we tried to look around for some other people that were hurt and tried to get the ambulances to coordinate. You know, we were basically trying to do triage. You know, I was like trying to walk around and talk to some people, make sure they're okay. You know, and, and as, as, as amazing as it sounds, our fans are more concerned with me than they were with themselves, and that just that made me even more sad. It's like it'll take, you know, I, I don't know. I, I'm I'm sorry, I'm kind of speechless right now. It's just oh. such a traumatic shock for me right now. Listen, we understand. Now, tell us about the status of, of your band. Is it true that Ty Longley is among the missing one of your guitarists? He's among the, he's among the missing, and right, that's where I'm getting ready to do when we get down these interviews. We've been trying to get a hold of him all day long. We've been down to a few hospitals. Um, he didn't have any ID on him, so. You know, we don't know whether or not he's maybe, you know, just in bed unconscious or can't get to, a, you know what I mean, can't get to a phone or the doctors are treating him. That's what we're hoping. You know, um, I don't, I don't want to see anybody get hurt, but, you know, it's, 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 so now I'm going to spend the next few hours trying to track him down. I mean, he's got, you know, he's, unfortunately he's got a, a, you know, his girlfriend at home is three months pregnant. 
you know, mm. and, and his father's been calling me, and it's, it's just it's horrifying. It's a horrifying experience. And Jack, it's I know horrifying. you got to run off and. Uh do that in very important work, but I, I think one of the most uh, tragic things we've heard today is from some of the patrons who said that even once the fire erupted, they stood there thinking the fire was part of the pyrotechnics display. You know, that's, yeah, I mean, we knew better. You know I mean, I mean, but you see, we start to see the wall start to burn, you know, something's wrong. You know, that's why I turned around and started throwing water on it. You know, and I, I, yeah. what else we could do, I don't know. I mean, there was nothing. I mean, we couldn't. There was nothing else we could do. Unfortunately, I just. I wish there was something we could have done. Well, our heart goes out to you, the members of your band, and uh, all the well, patrons you know, I mean, who. I'm, I'm, that's the people I'm concerned about. You know, I mean, I'm the fans. You know, the people that came out to the shows. I mean, I'm fine, thank God. But, you know, I, I, I would gladly, you know, gladly risk my life to go and save some people. You know, I tried to, but. You know, and, not, and that's not to make me sound like a great humanitarian, but I just, you know, obviously care about people, and I, I hate to see anybody get hurt, especially in circumstances like this where it's supposed to be fun, enjoyable, you know. Yeah, yeah and unfortunately, unfortunately uh, Jack, the descriptions we've heard from people trying to get out there, uh, the behavior of folks uh, trying to get out of the building was much like you would expect, a, a sense of panic. And, you know, and, and that... I know, a bottleneck and people getting trampled on. I mean, I heard from one of our uh, opening acts that um, he was at the front door and they were trying to pull some people out. They were actually alive on the bottom, but there was like bodies piled on top of them and they couldn't get them out. Yeah. But I think that had a lot to do with the lights being out. You know, I mean, you can't see. I mean, I couldn't see. When I tried to walk back in the club, I couldn't see two feet in front of my face. I mean, if the, shoot, the, you know, if the security lights had been working, maybe we might have got a few more people out. I don't know. I don't know. Well, we hope uh, you get some good news about Ty Longley. We're going to put up a picture of the band right now. Uh, Ty, one of the group's guitarists. Did you even, were you able to even talk to him as you all were being pulled off the stage? What was the last thing maybe no, the two of you said was, to each other? it was so fast. It went so fast. I mean, it was like for one second, you know, the fire was going off. Two seconds later, the fire was happening. Um, when we realized that the place was on fire, you know, like I said, I stuck around for a few more seconds looking for a fire extinguisher, waiting for somebody to show up. After that, we got yanked out. I didn't see him come out with the rest of us, and we looked from the parking lot everywhere else. We couldn't find him. Like I said, I've been to a couple hospitals already. We're trying to find around. He has no idea on him. So we're praying to God that, you know, he's just somewhere and he, and he can't get out of phone or, or, or he's incapacitated in some way. You know, and, and, and my heart and our, all our hearts go out to the people that have lost loved ones. And, I mean, there's nothing, you know, I, I, there's no words that can describe the way I feel. So, you know. I, yeah, how do you say you're sorry this happened? I mean, you know, it's just a terrible tragedy. I've been in rock and roll for 25 years and nothing like this has ever happened. Well, Jack, our uh, thoughts are with you uh, as you search for Ty Longley and as you uh, interface with some of the families who were so horribly affected by uh, what went wrong last night. Uh, be Jack, best of luck to you and thank you very much for joining us at this painful time. Thank you very time. much. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And, you know, my condolences, please, to everybody that came out to the show and, and got hurt. And, you know, our lost loved ones, my, my sincere condolences. I'm so sorry. I know that doesn't make you feel any better, but, you know, it's heartfelt. Once again, that was Jack Russell of the band Great White. We have yet to hear whether anybody has been able to find his fellow bandmate, Ty Longley, and we'll keep you posted on that. Unfortunately, he's wrestling, or the band members are wrestling with what so many families are having to deal with this morning, with so many different area hospitals taking in patients last night. There are still a number of families who haven't connected uh, with those patients at these hospitals. If you're just joining us here at the half hour mark, we want to very quickly bring you up to date on what we know at this hour. A rock concert turned into a deadly inferno last night in Rhode Island. The town manager of the town confirming that at least 54 people lost their lives. More than 164 injured being treated in area hospitals. A photographer caught the horrific scene on video. He was working on a story on fire or on safety at nightclubs. The fire quickly spread after an onstage pyrotechnics display appeared to get out of control. Unfortunately, a lot of the folks who were watching the show thought the fire was part of the act. Panic and terror soon followed as everyone rushed for the exits. Well, we actually have heard from the Rhode Island Attorney General, Charles Fogarty, and this is what he has uh, had to say to reporters following this horrible situation in Warwick, Rhode Island. Let's listen. Rhode Island's like a, uh, 
like a small town. So uh, this would be tragic anywhere it would happen, but in our state I think it has an even bigger impact because uh, once the list comes out, uh, we're all bound to know somebody who either directly or indirectly that was either injured or killed in this tragedy. And uh, we're going to know, we know, I know a lot of the folks, who are firefighters personally. So one was a councilman, uh, one of the local towns. Uh, so, I mean, they, they've been impacted by this as well. So this is going to have a major impact, I think, on uh, this, is, this is like a family tragedy. Fire chief confirming that a pyrotechnics license was required at this club, apparently was never applied for, and even the lead singer of the band Great White told us that the band was led to believe by the club manager that all of that had been taken care of. Well, you, gotta, you have to wonder, though, uh, even if pyrotechnic displays uh, hadn't taken place in the club, any nightclub that has flammable materials on a drop ceiling, apparently it had a drop ceiling, and on the walls, and whose sound baffles are likely to go up in smoke as quickly as, uh, as the ones in this club did. You have to wonder if that's a, that's a safe environment inherently. I mean, even if they hadn't been shooting sure. off fireworks indoors. The other question is, uh, the regulations apparently in Rhode Island did not require that that club have a sprinkler system. Uh, apparently it has to do the law up there with uh, the amount of square foot uh, footage in the building, and this was uh, considered too small to require a sprinkler system. Uh, the logic of that uh, escapes me, and I'm sure will be revisited by uh, uh, the officials up there, but uh, it would seem that any building like this where large numbers of people gather, whether it's restaurants, nightclubs, or whatever, uh, perhaps uh, requiring sprinkler systems across the board might be something that will be proposed up there in the not too distant future. Are you seeing the shot right here that the local photographer from yeah. WPRI captured? I think at this point it's already struck the ceiling, hasn't it? That's yeah, what and the, you can see people like jumping it. off the stage there, or you know, it looks like band members escaping to the right, and uh, there was a fellow jumped off the stage into the audience in that scene a moment it, ago. It took about 15 seconds for the pyrotechnics to ignite the ceiling. From that video. Wow. The other thing the uh, lead singer, uh, Jack, had mentioned was that uh, he tried to, uh, when he saw the fire spreading, tried to put it out with some bottled water he had there, but he said he looked around for a fire extinguisher and couldn't find one. So we all wonder why there wasn't one there on a stage when you're performing something inherently dangerous. A lot well, of questions. Investigators are on the scene trying to figure this all out, and we're going to keep you pay posted on the very latest. But in the meantime, let's check in with Darren Kagan, who has the rest of the morning's headlines. Good morning. Grief touching nearly everyone in this small town of nearly 35,000, just outside of Providence, Rhode Island. Nicole LaFleur and her family live right across the street from the nightclub. Here in Rhode Island, it's so small that if you, you don't, you're not that relative, then you know someone who knows that person. And it's just really, it's just unbelievable. It's just unbelievable. I can't believe it's happening here. Christy Lee, Miss Rhode Island, USA, says she had many friends in the club last night. Friends she's yet to find. Now is the toughest time. Now it's the waiting game and finding out, you know, who was there that you didn't know. Or... And that's where that networking you were talking Absolutely. about really comes in. That everybody calling each other. Yes. Is your brother, is your friend okay? That kind of I, thing. My phone has not stopped ringing since 11 o'clock last night. Now, as the investigation continues behind me, the governor, who is on site right now, has said that the most imperative thing right now is to identify these bodies. This is families, as you saw in my piece, have been walking the streets of West Warwick tonight looking somewhat like nomads, asking anybody if they know the person that they're holding up in the picture. And in response to this, the state has set up a family assistance center just down the street. It's a hotel. The Red Cross is there, and they plan on feeding hundreds of families tonight while they wait to hear from authorities whether their loved ones were indeed inside this nightclub. Wolf? I don't blame them for being uh, reeling right now in West Warwick. Whitney Casey, thanks very much. Here's your chance to weigh in on this very sad story. Our web question of the day is this. Should someone be held criminally responsible for the Rhode Island nightclub fire? Yes, no, or too early to tell? We'll have the results later in this broadcast. Vote at CNN. With this is, is uh, being questioned, and that's going forward. The owner? Uh, the owner? I don't know. Governor, uh, I don't know. It, the investigation is uh, not going, uh, but do you expect that the result is going to be uh, changed in the fire code system? Well, I don't know. I, what we got to do, as I said, I don't want to get ahead of us. But, but, you know, my concern right now is dealing with the immediate situation. Next step is, I have said, we met earlier today, and I said I want to get an inventory ASAP on other kinds of facilities like this around the state. Uh, if we've got other, you know, venues where we've got uh, this kind of thing going on with large groups, uh, 
you know, what is the facility like? Uh, you know, are they sprinklered? All those kinds of things. So we're going to go through that process because, God forbid, we don't want something like this to happen again uh, at, at another location when uh, we should have known about it. So we're going to go through that. Whether there's legislation or changes that need to take place, we'll see how that falls out. Can you tell us how many family members you've talked to and what you've said to them? Well, I don't, you know, in terms of members, my, you know, I didn't, my guess is there was probably, uh, you know, a couple hundred people over there. How many families that represents, I'm not sure, because you've got, you've got uh, neighbors, friends, you've got uh, 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 brothers, sisters, you know, you've got, you got many family members. So uh, of that, how many actual families that's representing, I don't know. Uh, you know, all, all I've said is, you know, there's not much you can say, you know, the pain, the, the hurt, uh, what these people are going through, the loss is just not something that you can, uh, you can speak to. All, all, uh, all that I've tried to say is we, we uh, assure them that we will do everything we can uh, to get them answers on their loved ones as fast as possible. Uh, and then... Uh, there's a lot of support. Let me just say that the Red Cross, uh, the number of uh, uh, clergy people that I saw there, uh, there, there, there were dozens. Uh, so the community has really come together to provide uh, support for these families. Uh, but right now, their biggest question is, you know, where is their loved one? Governor, do you have any idea if this club was 21 and over? No, I don't know that. Absolutely. Uh, I, I think that what we will find at the end of the day uh, that there will be, uh, you know, few people that aren't touched somehow. As, as you say, uh, uh, the beauty of our little state is that we know a lot of people and know one another. We care for one another, and uh, uh, and that's showing in this this terrible tragedy. The outpouring of uh, love and concern and caring has just been. Uh, uh, just truly amazing, and uh, so yeah, I think you're right. You go, we all find that many of us are going to be impacted, uh, either directly or indirectly, by this. Governor Donald Carcieri, the governor of Rhode Island, speaking poignantly about this horrible disaster that has uh, affected not only his community of West Warwick, Rhode Island, but indeed the entire nation, the entire world has been watching this sad story, confirming 95 dead, saying that very few of them so far identified, obviously, those bodies extremely badly burned. We're going to continue to monitor this, uh, this fire. Let's give you some perspective, though, some historic perspective. There have been earlier deadly night, nightclub fires. One of the nation's worst was in 1944. Boston's Coconut Grove nightclub went up in flames, killing 491 people. A May 1977 fire at the Beverly Hills Supper Club in Southgate, Kentucky, near Cincinnati, killed 167 people. And on March 25, 1990, a fire at the Happy Land Social Club in the Bronx left 87 people dead. Investigators in the Beverly Hills Supper Club fire say several factors contributed to that tragedy, including inadequate wiring and the absence of a sprinkler system and alarm system, among other things. There was also, that was also the case in the fire at New York's Happy Land Social Club. The city had ordered the building closed for code violations. There was another horrible fire today as well, and a year and a half after the 9-11 attacks, with an orange alert in effect, a high level of terror alert. It was in as people were trampled to death in a rush for the door. CNN's Chicago Bureau Chief Jeff Flock will join us live with an update on this horrific story. Stay with us.